Did you know you could use your FSA or HSA on LASIK at the LASIK Vision Institute? So don't let your tax-free funds go to waste. Great Vision is just a click away. Right now, the LASIK Vision Institute's offering 20% off LASIK when treated in December. That can be over $900 off when treating both eyes. So visit MyLVIOffer.com. Must mention this promotion to be treated in December of 2023 to qualify. 20% off standard price and procedure. Cannot be combined with any other offers. See details at MyLVIOffer.com. And good evening. We are doing it live right here on 790 KBC in the 5 o'clock hour in the heart of drive time. A news-driven hour on your money, the markets, and the economy. Motec on money, five nights a week for you. Live on the air right here on 790 KBC. Streaming live online worldwide at kbc.com. And you're on demand. Motec on money podcast at kbc.com. Apple iTunes and all of your favorite podcast platforms. Stocks ending a bit lower today with the November rally stalling a bit ahead of the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. We have another trading day tomorrow. Then the markets will be closed for Thanksgiving and a shortened holiday trading session on Friday. We got a mixed bag of retail earnings today. NVIDIA coming out with its earnings news after the closing bell today. The Dow coming in for a closing loss of 63 points. The S&P 500 dropped nearly 10 and the NASDAQ lost nearly 85 points. Stocks ending lower with the release of the notes from the Fed's last big policy setting meeting, which showed the Fed officials were concerned a strong economy could cause inflation to reaccelerate, but did nothing to ease investors' concerns that the Fed's next move will be a rate cut next year, which would be good news for the market. Investors adopting a more cautious stance ahead of the potentially market-moving news from AI chip company NVIDIA, which of course drove the Market rally earlier this year after the closing bell. Yeah, NVIDIA easily topped revenue and earnings expectations for the latest quarter, setting a new top-line record of $18 billion in the process. Big news in the crypto world today with a guy known as CZ, the co-founder of the world's largest crypto exchange, Binance, pleading guilty to criminal charges today related to violating U.S. anti-money laundering laws, and he stepped down as head of the company. Over the long run, another black eye for the Crypto industry could end up being a positive, though, for Binance and the crypto markets, according to several market observers talking to MarketWatch. We're watching what's happening in the Middle East tonight, and later this hour we'll be going live to Israel. Rabbi Abraham Cooper, the associate dean of the Simon Wiesenthal Center and its director of global social action, will be joining us live with an update later this hour. Big changes in the world of real estate. We're watching all of that, and including the impact of ULA, which has been upheld recently by a judge and still under challenge. Jerry Sullivan, National Managing Editor of The Real Deal, former editor of the LA Business Journal and Orange County Business Journal, will be joining us live for the very latest on what's happening with commercial as well as residential real estate. But first, on your money, the markets, the economy, and the whole works now. <coughs> joining us live now, investment expert Brian Perry with Mint Asset Management at mintassetmanagement.com. And and, Brian, thank you very much for joining us. Also the author, by the way, of the 25% cash machine. Brian, thank you very much for taking the call here. It looks like we have a bit of a, a pause here with the, uh, the S&P 500 snapping a five-day uh, winning streak here. And, of course, we've seen an impressive rally since uh, October. Give us uh, your view of this uh, latest market action here, first of all. Thanks, Frank. Great to be with you. The, um, the Santa Claus rally has come early here this year, and uh, Wall Street is uh, really a, in a very jubilant mood here. Simply from we had two very you know, positive inflation reports in the CPI and the PPI index. We had uh, uh, a bond option there uh, or two here. The 20-year went off very well uh, a couple days back here, which there was you know, some uh, some white knuckle uh, grinding uh, going into that particular option there. But that met was that was not with good demand. We had a uh, you know, some Fed um, kind of wink and nod uh, rhetoric here, and also. Just some general feeling by uh, investors in the bond market feeling that rate cuts will maybe be coming as early as in the spring of 2024, as opposed to middle of next year. And you've had um, you know other indicators come in showing that uh, that inflation is trending lower here on a, on a couple other fronts here. So all that being said, we still also have uh, leading economic indicators which are down for the sixth straight month in a row. Um, that's not lagging indicators; those are leading indicators showing that the consumers trying to tighten their belt here. Uh, and simply, you know, even though the bond market has rallied a full half point, you know, from 5% to roughly 4.4% on the 10-year bond, it doesn't change the $1.03 trillion in credit card debt that Americans have out there. So uh, there's um, there, there's some second guessing here as to whether the, uh, the consumer 
is going to be able to, uh, you know, to continue to stomach these higher rates here without without really dialing it back. And that's something that uh, the market has digested extremely well here based on this con- you know, continuing rally into the Magnificent Seven and Big Cap Tech, which has dominated this rally here going into uh, the holiday season here. Um, what I notice is that, you know, you've got, um, uh, you know, other things that are developing here. You had a continuing resolution for Congress that came through. So the spending, uh, the, the next spending uh, limits will be, you know, addressed back around January 19th. Okay, so there's some time there. And there may be a release of uh, some hostages between the Hamas and Israeli uh, dispute there also. So uh, in the G visit went, uh, President G visit with Biden went okay, as best can be said. But it wasn't a disaster, as some might have thought. So you had a lot of things, uh, Frank, kind of line up and, and get and kind of go better than expected, along with the fact that we're in seasonality here. And you had really the 10-year bond has, you know, they got the joystick on this on this rally here. So as long as rates went lower and then you had these other outside events here go a little bit better than according to plan, then you had the market where there's a lot of, you know, fear of missing out, money and short covering really dominate, take over. And it, and it just really boosted the market into this week where now you've got some quotes selling on the news with NVIDIA and Autodesk and some other names are reporting great numbers. But a lot of that was was priced in coming into today. On there live with Brian Perry, chief investment strategist and portfolio manager at Mint Asset Management. Brian, on the uh, the big news uh, after the closing bell today, NVIDIA out with its uh, earnings news, uh, topping revenue and earnings expectations and uh, NVIDIA shares uh, appear to be moving a bit lower in after-hours trading. Have you had a chance to, to look at this? Uh, and what are your thoughts about uh, NVIDIA and the rest of the AI space uh, at this point? Well, they uh, had phenomenal numbers. Uh, certainly the, uh, the the cloud area, the data centers, they quadrupled their revenues there. Uh, what the, the big uh, um, question mark is China. Uh, there's a lot of restrictions now on, on sending uh, advanced ships over to China there. And they, they talked about maybe taking a $2 billion hit on their exports to China next year, but they, they say that can be made up in other regions. Uh, that, that that was not really detailed, Frank. So there's um, there's some speculation as to why that, you know, where, where that's going to come from to replace those revenues of, of really the most advanced high-powered chips. And that may be why the, the stock is giving back a little bit here after the close. Um, and it's been an, a, a, a tumultuous week for AI here. You've had OpenAI with Sam Altman, the founder, you know, get fired from the board, hired by Microsoft. A bunch of his people decided to come over with him. A lot of pe- hundreds of people at Open Ed threatened to, to leave. If the board wasn't fired themselves, you've had, um, you know, uh, uh, Mark Benioff, uh, the CEO of, Sa- of Salesforce.com, say, hey, come on over here. We'll stroke you a big check to come on over here. What it tells me is that the talent pool for the most talent rich AI and engineers out there is very tight. And so, therefore, um, those uh, that's got to be the hottest degree in the in the world right now is is a is a uh, an AI engineer, a software engineer. So there's um there's a lot of turmoil there, and um you know Microsoft is is they're willing to play both sides of the game. Whether it's a tennis match right now, they'll they'll, they'll work with OpenAI. They'll they'll take everything they can get. But um you know Nadella, the CEO of, of, of Microsoft, is trying to play right down the middle. And so, therefore, Microsoft also kind of everybody's kind of in a wait and see period here because, obviously, it's a it's a um, it's a, a very small crowd uh, that of people that really know how to do this well, and so that the stakes are high, um, and that's what happened here this week. A lot of drama, uh, but at the same time, it's um it, it kind of shows you that how important AI is to the biggest uh, hyperscalers and those that run the um, you know the, the information world out there that. This is the real deal, and it's just a matter of um, of how to leverage it and and using the limited assets that are out there to to maximum capacity. Thank you for that excellent analysis. So Microsoft, we see coming off its all time high on that Sam Altman news, uh, hit a record high yesterday when uh, Wall Street cheered uh, what was described uh, as a coup for Microsoft, hiring uh, Altman after the Open AI ouster. Microsoft down about four dollars today at three seventy three. And change uh, that Microsoft uh, story. That that's certainly a big one uh, this year. Who, whoever thought we would see Microsoft yeah. uh, above uh, three hundred, let alone close to four hundred here? Well, it really is. It's it's something else. But they they've got they're hitting all, all cylinders there. You know, whether it's a LinkedIn or they're open. Uh, their three sixty five has, has been phenomenal. Their Windows business is great. Their Xbox business is great. You know, they've really uh, they they managed to just really go you know, very well in all directions there. 
But, you know, actually, you know, the, the late news as we come into this radio show was that uh, Altman may end up right back into open AIs. You know, it's, this actually may, may start where, uh, you know, he might be right back where he started. And so it's just, you know, it's fascinating how this is all uh, coming together. But what it also tells me is that normally you'd see a deal like that fall apart. You'd see Microsoft really get, get you know, just hit. Interestingly enough, though, Frank, is, uh, you know, Elon Musk and all the turmoil that's going on in his life right now with everything that he's been putting out there on X and, and all the controversy he's been generating, well, his own X AI is apparently, you know, uh, you know, that much better than than uh, than an open AI's chat box GPT. You know, it's called Grok, and it's a real time access to the X platform, which has a you know massive advantage over other models because it's all real time information there. So not only that, it comes with kind of a bit of an attitude, you know, which you know, that only makes sense, you know, coming from from Musk, you know. So it's it's an interesting where. He's talking like, you know, that Grok can just do laps around chat GPT, but, you know, X is a private company. He's going to start charging a premium for that, probably $17 a month or thereabouts. So this is now becoming a, um, a big story that most people haven't really given much much time to. But if uh, if if, uh, if Grok is that good and that actually, you know, uh, claims to be that much better than, than chat GPT, then, you know, look out, you know, that, um, that for – uh, you know, for for Musk and all that, you know, the the turmoil that's going on and, and with around him. But at the same time, he continues to surprise. And even with Tesla stock here trading higher this week, after all that's been said and done, uh, you know, along the, the you know the political turmoil, it's it's just amazing how the market is so agnostic about money when it says, you know what, I just want to go where it's best served when it comes to the most the incredible technology right here, right now. And things are changing so fast. Uh, it was just uh, less than two weeks ago that uh, Elon Musk uh, debuted Grok. That's spelled G-R-O-K, by the way. The first technology out of Elon Musk's new AI company, XAI. So things are, are happening very, very fast, uh, very, very uh, rapid acceleration in the AI space, which, of course, uh, has got the uh, sag after attention here uh, in Hollywood. And things are evolving very, very quickly. So we will keep an eye on all of that. Again, thank you very much for, for highlighting all those uh, important points here and enlightening uh, not only myself, but the uh, entire listening audience. Now, in the crypto world, uh, we see this other big news uh, today. It was just a couple of weeks after FTX founder Sam Bankman-Fried was uh, convicted of taking billions of dollars in customer money from his uh, crypto exchange. Uh, today, we got another uh, guilty plea in the crypto world. The um, the big news involving the Binance head, who, who has since uh, resigned. Uh, what do we need to know about that, Brian Perry? Yeah, the, uh, you know, they, they've got a cost of $4 billion in restitution. And then uh, in order for the company to stay in business, and then the CEO has got to, you know, he's got to write a check for $50, you know, $50 million, you know, to, to keep him going to jail for, I guess, for the rest of his life. Um, but interestingly enough, that really hasn't upset the, the crypto world because, you know, the, the whole thing about spot uh, ETFs for Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and possibly other coins like Solana. It's, it's going forward here with uh, the names of like you know BlackRock and Fidelity and Schwab and these other huge names. Uh, they want into this business here, and, and quite frankly, Frank, there's uh, you know there's you know there's a lot of momentum there, and and it seems like what what Bitcoin used to be considered you know the the, the coin of of the underworld has now become very transparent. About blockchains now are becoming. <laughs> The football season is underway, and Believe Podcasts are talking about it. When he went home and went to sleep, Michael Parsons was just terrorizing him. Believe has podcasts covering all 32 professional teams and many of your favorite college teams, too. And to be only producing 15 points a game, that's something that is definitely disheartening. Sideline to sideline, end zone to end zone. As a quarterback, I would expect him to be acting like that. Take the accountability. Put that on yourself. Don't put it on your teammates. Search B-L-E-A-V Podcasts wherever you listen. I'm very... Uh, transparent about how to be able to, you know, manage transactions and know where everything's going all the time from here to there. And I find that to be fascinating because that's bringing legitimacy to the to the crypto world. And so, therefore, and we've got this what is called the halving, the next halving of Bitcoins coming up here in May of 2024. And that means that right now there's there's 6.25 Bitcoins mined every 10 minutes. And when you have a halving, that means that that's that's cut in half. So after May of next year only 3.12 coins are going to be mined every 10 minutes. Well, that just means there's fewer coins being mined and demand is up. And eventually, on, at, at, you know, 2021, 2140, when's the last Bitcoin going to be mined? But it's just a much slower production of Bitcoin going forward. And roughly, 
of the 17 million supposedly in circulation right now, about 4 million have been permanently lost because either the keys have been lost, the private keys have been lost, or people have just died with those Bitcoin. And so therefore, the circulation is probably closer to 13 million, which is keeping a, a serious bid under Bitcoin here. And so therefore, I think with the, the more legitimacy that's starting to take place with Bitcoin and Ethereum and Solana, which is now starting to I mean, Ethereum roughly transacts like 15 transactions per second, where Solana can, can is thousands per second. So being able to potentially bypass Visa and MasterCard to do transactions is, is what that's all about. But there's, um, there's some real, uh, you know, institutional gusto now behind Bitcoin, Ethereum, and possibly Solana and some other coins. And therefore, I'm, I've become much more favorable about what's happening here. I've been talking about Coinbase recently, and that's really taken off. But I think that we're going to see another leg higher here for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and and maybe Solana. Very interesting. And uh, we see Bitcoin down about 600 right now at 36,148. We're keeping an eye on that one. Uh, At this point, uh, Brian Perry, uh, as we head into the uh, Thanksgiving holiday weekend here, uh, any specific places where you are putting money now and or uh, taking it off the table? For those who do want to, you know, know, own the, you know, the the Bitcoin, Ethereum combo there, you know, beat um, you know, BTGO, um, BTGC, you know, which is the great, um, um, the Greystone uh, um, uh, uh, Bitcoin. And then Ethereum is a ETHE. That's another one there also, Grayscale. Uh, those two look like, you know, you can you can trade those, um, you know, for uh, because they're, you can buy them in your you know, IRAs and things like that very easily. Uh, I like this Li Auto, L-I. It's a Chinese EV maker here. It's kind of really surprising when a lot of EV companies are not doing well. This one here is really, really doing well. I mean, their their year to year sales are up over three hundred percent. They their their cars look great. They're affordable. They just serve the Chinese market, and it's become just a, a real you know go to uh, brand over there. So people may look at LI. It's really got a beautiful chart, uh, phenomenal forecasted revenues, and you know when most EV makers here are really struggling, this one here is just, you know kicking butt. So that's one to take a look at here. Uh, PDD uh, also PDD in, uh, it owns this uh, website called Timu, which has become you know really hot. Um, you know uh, e-commerce retailer taking um, taking you know Korea and other they're in 40 countries right now, but you know, overtaking Amazon in, in a number of countries right now. So PDD is on the move here. It's around 117. Uh, that's a, that's Papa Delta Delta. And um, and take a hard look at that. They're they're, they're top line, bottom line are, are accelerating here. I've been I've been still buying the uh, you know Novo Nordisk uh, NVO, you know, which is the, the weight loss drug company here. They own two of the big weight loss drugs here. Uh, I started picking up some Rocket Mortgage here. Rates going to start you know pushing lower here next year. Then this company has been hammered here, down from the high twenties down to like nine dollars. And it's the largest mortgage broker in all of America. It used to be Quick and Loans, RKT. Um, so and big short position in there too. So that may be one that, you know, people want to take a look at more speculative accounts. Um, and also I like the CME, which is a CME group here that, you know, which is Chicago Mercantile Exchange by formal name, uh, trades around 210, 213. It's breaking out here. Big player in the options business here because options are just so popular with everybody. And, and coming off, uh, you know, I still think eBay, they've stayed, they forecasted lower sales and earnings here going forward here. The stock is breaking down. eBay looks like that's going to move lower here. And I'm still not a believer that this market here is, is fully broad, Frank. You've got the IWM, which represents the Russell 2000, and the KRE, which represents the regional bank shares, have not broken above their 200-day moving averages. So despite all the hoopla, you know, about how wonderful things are, people should watch those two particular indexes there because um, the KRE is, is a, a, an important component to the financial sector. And if people want to own financials, yeah, you can own UBS and Visa, and you can own CME. You can own other types of financials, like that is noted. But be very wary of the regional banks in here because they still have a lot of problems hanging over them with high interest rates and a lot of uh, um, corporate office property exposure there. So those are the ones that I'd be on the, on the lookout for to uh, maybe pull back further. Brian, thank you very much for taking the call here. Uh, we always appreciate your uh, thorough analysis and thoughtful uh, answers here on this program. And uh, We wish you and your family a wonderful Thanksgiving. Chief Investment Strategist and Portfolio Manager at Mint Asset Management at mintassetmanagement.com. Brian Perry, investment expert and also author of the 25% cash machine. Brian, thank you very much for joining us live here tonight on Motec on Money on 790 KBC. You too, Frank. Have a great Thanksgiving and thanks again. Thank you very much. 
Folks, people like you and me have our ear to the ground in all things business. We like to be informed and well-prepared. And as important as finance is, I want you to have a plan in case you're hit by someone not paying attention to the road. Thinking ahead serves as well, but even still, we can get caught off guard as people are so focused on their destination that they might not have a plan in place if they're in an accident that's not their fault. That's why I encourage you to put my friend, Attorney Clark Fielding's number in your phone, 833-88-SHARK. So if you're hurt in an accident, you'll be ready with your strategy to make Clark Fielding your very first call. Fielding Law aims for the highest possible settlements, considering you might need long-term care, rehab, compensation for lost wages, and any ongoing physical or emotional pain. So if you're hurt in any kind of an accident, call for a free consultation with Fielding Law. You can trust them. They're honest, respected, and your strategy in case you get into that unexpected accident. Motorcycle, truck, pedestrian, scooter, hit and run, boating, or bicycle accidents, you name it. The number to call is 833-88-SHARK. That's 833-88-SHARK. Or go to ClarkTheSharkLaw.com. 790 KBC welcomes the Trilogy Tour with Enrique Iglesias, Ricky Martin, and Pitbull coming to the Honda Center February 3rd, 2024. Tickets on sale now at Ticketmaster.com. And right now, Caller 9 wins at 1-888-790-5222. and get a pair of tickets to the show and live the Vita Loca. Call now. Caller 9 wins, 1-888-790-5222. Motacle Money continues here in 790 KBC. A pullback for the stock market today with the Dow slipping 63 points at 35,000. 88, the S&P 500 down 9 at 4,538, and the NASDAQ down 85 points at 14,200. The S&P 500 snapping a five-day winning streak. The yield in the 10-year note, which impacts the fixed-rate mortgage rates out there, back down to 4.40%. Looks like the Treasury note yields have hit uh, two-month lows after sending mortgage rates to a 23-year highs recently. The price of oil pulling back today down $0.06 cents at $77.77 a barrel. And let's take a look here at uh, the price of gold, which we didn't get a chance to talk about earlier. It got a pop today, moving above 2000 of 2130 at $2,001.60 an ounce, getting close to its all-time high, which we saw back during the uh, pandemic year of 2020. The all-time high for gold intraday was $2,089.20 an ounce. It settled uh, around that time in August of 2020 at $2,069.40. That's the highest close for the price of gold. So we're just about $70 or so away from the record high following today's move on the upside. Taking a look at the cryptos now, we see a Bitcoin down 650 at 36,148, Ethereum down 30 at 1,956, and Doge at 7 cents. Motega Money continues here in 790 KBC following the latest developments in the Middle East, including the breaking news after a six-hour meeting in Tel Aviv that ended in the early hours of the morning, the Israeli cabinet voting to accept a deal for a temporary ceasefire with the terror group Hamas that would involve the exchange of hostages being held by that group for Palestinian detainees in Israeli jail. Joining us live now from Israel, Rabbi Abraham Cooper, the associate dean of the Simon Wiesenthal Center in West Los Angeles and its director of Global Social Action, one of the most prominent rabbis, prominent religious leaders in the world. Rabbi Cooper, thank you very much for taking the call live here from Israel. Give us an update on what's happening there. Well, it's obviously a very somber time right now. It's wartime, actually, for Israelis. And uh, there are, you know, a couple of soldiers who are killed every uh, day or so. And um, But there's a very serious resolve to deal with Hamas and ultimately get rid of it. On the other side of this coin are the fact that there are over 200 hostages that uh, the world's done nothing over six weeks to get released. That includes the UN. It includes until basically yesterday the International Red Cross. And so Israel has uh, has to make a deal with the devil. And uh, I did see on Israeli TV, if it's an accurate account, the you know the faces and the names of the kids will be released. About thirty uh, children. Uh, including uh, some mothers, but excluded from that list are eight fathers, a mother, and two grandparents who are still going to be held in captivity, even as their their children have been released. In other words, this is, uh, uh, I think, three terrorists for every hostage that's released at this stage, and it's difficult to know where it's going to go from here. But when you have children being held hostage and uh, the world doing nothing. Uh, Israel, I think, was backed into uh, into a corner. 
Uh, however, you do hear from the top leaders of Israel is that when this period is over, they're, they're not pulling out of Gaza. They're going to go and try to finish the job. So it's uh, mixed feelings at best right now. Uh, that sense of resolve was still there. And, of course, prayers that the children and their mothers will actually be released on Thursday. We're dealing with uh, Hamas terrorists who wouldn't know the truth if they were hit with a two-by-four. On the air live with Rabbi Abraham Cooper on day 46 of the Israel-Hamas war with the breaking news uh, that a hostage release deal with Hamas uh, has been approved by the Israeli lawmakers. Uh, that just happened moments ago. We're on the air live with Rabbi Cooper from Israel. And we see that um, Israel continues uh, to be under attack. The Iron Dome, we understand, um, has been deployed and there have been uh, additional rocket attacks uh, on Israel. What, what is the situation there now? Well, former Navy SEAL Sean Ryan shares real stories from real people from all walks of life on The Sean Ryan Show. Tennessee Congressman Tim Burchett. Where do the majority of UAP sightings happen? Yeah, they, you know, military installations, but I, I couch that. I mean, if they're going to fly here and check something out, they're going to see where our best and brightest are, I would assume. They asked me about, about seeing any UFOs in Washington, D.C., and I said, no, I said, there's no intelligent life. <laughs> The Sean Ryan Show on YouTube or wherever you listen. Right now at Safeway, save on all your personal care favorites during the Buy 3, Save 3 dollar sale. During the Buy 3, Save 3 dollar sale at Safeway, buy three of your favorite personal care items like Dove Shampoo, Dove Antiperspirant Deodorant, Dove Men's Body Wash, Tresemme Hairspray, or Axe Shower Gel and save $3. Offer expires November 28th. Restrictions apply. Visit Safeway.com or head into your local store for full offer details. Again, it's uh, kind of unprecedented talking, you know, dealing with uh, Hamas in the south, but you have Hezbollah with 150,000 missiles uh, from southern Lebanon, and they're continuing to play this uh, very deadly game of escalation, but not total war, with the United States uh, also absorbing uh, a lot of uh, punishment, a lot of soldiers getting hurt in Syria from Iranian back groups. So, you know, the situation here in the Holy Land um, is still very much up in the air. But I've, you know, I've, I've been to Israel many, many times, and I've never seen people uh, more united and with a sense of uh, resolve to see this uh, through because uh, no country uh, could go about its business, no nation in the world when it has these kinds of terrorists uh, next door, armed to the teeth by the Iranians, uh, by the Russians. Uh, you see some North Korean things here as well. Uh, and, you know, in a lot of ways, I kind of feel that uh, Israel's the first line of defense here uh, for, for the good people of the world. And when you talk about Hamas, I'm not talking about all Palestinians, Hamas represents evil. The Iranian regime represents evil. They operate on a different plane. They don't share any of our uh, humanitarian or humane uh, values. That's just the fact we've had our 9-11. We've uh, had to deal with ISIS. And now Israel has to deal both with Hamas, Hezbollah, and the Iranian puppet masters, if you will. On the air live from Israel with Rabbi Abraham Cooper. Rabbi, let me ask you this. Um, these attacks that are happening against uh, U.S. Uh, military installations by Iranian-backed uh, militias and so forth, uh, what's your reaction to that? And uh, what is the uh, the discussion there in Israel about the, Iran's role and what's been happening? Well, I think there are two, two points. Number one, uh, uh, Israel and I think the entire Jewish world uh, is so grateful that the, pre that the president sent the U.S. Navy to the Eastern Mediterranean. I think without their physical presence, the Iranians probably would have already unleashed Hezbollah and Israel would have been involved in a, in a two-front war and probably in a, eventually a war with the Iranians. The U.S. has shown a tremendous amount of restraint. Um, a lot of observers in this part of the world are not really uh, impressed with restraint. They know that America is still a the strongest nation in the world, I think if they exercise some more muscle against the Iranians, uh, that maybe things would actually calm down here in the region. 
So it's very much in the air. And the U.S. troops are in, in different places in Syria um, uh, are sort of sitting ducks because they're, you know, in specific limited locations. So uh, it's a very, very tough time for the U.S. military. But I have to say we're enormously grateful. And you see the difference in the world when the United States just shows up. They haven't fired anything yet from, uh, uh, I think, from any of the ships. Their presence alone has uh, kept things uh, uh, as bad as they are. Uh, could it be much, much worse if the U.S. stayed home and, God forbid, you had, let's say, the Chinese Navy or the Russians uh, showing up? So it's high stakes over here. Um, but, you know, life goes on. Uh, Israel is a great democracy. And um, I'm actually here in a few hours to uh, attend my oldest grandson's wedding. And that's what life is like in Israel, a combination of ingredients, the good and the bad. Well, Mazel off to you and, and your family, uh, Rabbi, and uh, can't thank you enough for, for joining us live here. Be before we let you off the line here, I, I know it's very early there, and you've had a, a very long day, and so appreciate your, your coming to the line. I don't know if you saw the, uh, the op-ed uh, article published uh, over the weekend in the Washington Post uh, with President Biden uh, repeating his uh, position. Um, the president and the top U.S. officials have been reviving talk of, of working toward a two-state solution for the governance uh, of Gaza. What's your reaction uh, to this uh, to this latest op-ed and, and your position on what should happen? Well, Frank, since uh, I just mentioned uh, a wedding, when you have a wedding, you can have a great caterer, the United States, you can have a groom waiting or a bride waiting, but you need two sides. And right now, polls are showing that over 80% of the Palestinians uh, back what Hamas did on October 7th. Mm. You have UNRWA, which has been teaching their children um, how to hate and not how to love. They're in charge of education. You have the PA that uh, uh, pays the families of terrorists who mur manage to murder Israelis. So I, I go to Israel a lot. Um, I meet a lot of normals, meaning uh, in, from all different countries. Very talented people, the Palestinians. Unfortunately, the people who are the normals are nowhere near the levers of power. And frankly, the United States keeps making the same error over and over again. If you want a two-state solution, you better locate and empower the people who actually want to live in peace with each other. Because as you know, the Hamas narrative has taken hold of American camp elite campuses. Uh, you hear these uh, threats uh, in the streets, not only online. And there needs to be a fundamental change. The Palestinian Authority is yesterday's news. They're corrupt. Hamas is going to be removed one way or the other. And actually, that would mean that with some uh, creativity and commitment uh, and some rational uh, options, there could be a Palestinian leadership that will emerge where people can talk uh, someday about a two-state solution. But what transpired with the massacre, the mass rapes, uh, the kidnappings and everything else that's transpired. No Israeli government, center, right, left, coalition, doesn't make a difference. The citizens here uh, want a change. They're demanding a change. And remember, if you can't protect your own kids in your own home, uh, you have no, you're not going to have uh, the kinds, even some great names that we know right now. I think a lot of the leaders of Israel um, are probably going to be approaching the end of their tenure. This is a democracy, and when this is all over, they're going to have to stand before the court of public opinion and explain why they failed to protect their civilians uh, back uh, in October. So right now it's a very tough time, but this is the Holy Land. You know, it's all about miracles at the end of the day. But I'm afraid if the United States, Great Britain, the European Union, not to speak of the United Nations, completely useless institution. Um, they have to take a fresh look, not at the concept of two-state solution, but who's going to be running the other side, because Israelis will no longer buy, uh, you know, wait a couple of years, uh, let them develop their own way. They gave up the Gaza Strip in 2005 for free. They gave everything back to the Palestinians. And, and look where we are today. So... Um, I think the ball is going to be very much, as far as Israel, Israeli citizens are concerned, in, in the Palestinians' court. 
They're, it's up to them to change the way they behave. And by the way, it's very interesting also. This invasion and mass, the mass murders on October 7th didn't take place in any settlements. It took place in sovereign, internationally recognized territory in southern Israel. And yet, all of the Hamas PR, all of the releases they put out, only talk about settlers, which means one thing. To them, every single one of the uh, 9 million uh, plus citizens in Israel are either settlers or uh, working with settlers, which means a death sentence. And so um, this whole idea that this is an issue of geography, it is not. As we see here, it's really a matter of psychology. If you're going to have a wedding, you need two sides. You need a bride and a groom, and you need compromise. If you don't have that, there's no chance for peace. Rabbi Cooper, thank you very much for joining us live on on the big news tonight. Directly from Israel, that is Rabbi Abraham Cooper, the Associate Dean of the Simon Wiesenthal Center and Director of Global Social Action, of course, a leading global Jewish human rights organization based here in West Los Angeles. Uh, Rabbi, speaking of weddings, we wish you and your family all the very best. Uh, Mazel Tov, and, and certainly you. appreciate your joining us here, and we'll keep an open line uh, to you uh, on on everything happening there. Thank you very much uh, for taking the call here live with us here tonight. Thank you. Take care, Frank. Thank you very much, Rabbi Cooper. And Moteca Money continues here in 790 KBC, turning now to real estate, the whole world of residential real estate, dealing with big changes that could be coming to agents' commission structure following a big uh, court decision recently. Let's bring in Jerry Sullivan now, national managing editor of The Real Deal, former editor of the L.A. Business Journal and O.C. Business Journal. Jerry Sullivan, great to reconnect with you here uh, live on the air tonight on Motec on Money on 790 KBC. Uh, tell us what we need to know uh, about this situation here with that uh, big court ruling, a landmark uh, antitrust lawsuit, finding the National Association of Realtors uh, and two brokerages guilty of conspiring to keep commissions high under the industry group's uh, rule dictating commission splits in exchange for access to the, to the MLS. Uh, tell us what we need to know about all that. Yeah, Frank, it's good to be with you tonight. Um, it's the Sitzer Burnett case, I think, is the, the one that is uh, getting all the attention, is setting, I guess, the potential to set the precedent. And it essentially uh, calls into question now the long held practice of the seller's agent essentially paying the buyer's agent's commission. And this gets to the MLS system um, that realtors in various markets around the, the nation use uh, as a sales platform. Um, and he said it was challenged on antitrust grounds. And so now this opens up uh, the possibility that that system is going to be shook up. And I think it's taking a wait and see attitude to see how the judgment plays out. Uh, there's a number of follow-up suits uh, in the works. There's a major one in Illinois, uh, one was just filed in Texas. And so there's a long legal road to go, but, uh, you know, we'll have to see how it comes out. All right. Everybody's talking about that Sitzer Burnett uh, case in case, uh, that's mentioned. Uh, that's what they're talking about. That uh, landmark uh, decision in, in Kansas city on, um, real estate uh, commissions. Uh, give us an update on what's happening here in Los Angeles with so much concern about uh, defaults and the commercial real estate world, uh, specifically, um, the office space is here. Um, uh, Jerry, what do we need to know? Uh, give us an update on what's happening here in the Los Angeles area. Yeah, I don't know. You know, we, we last time we spoke maybe a month ago, we were saying, you know, office is rugged. It's not looking great. And no no great change there, Frank. Um, and I see sort of pockets, not just office, but other aspects of the commercial market. There's a, a hotel, the Viv Hotel down in Anaheim, which is not far from Disneyland. So within the Disneyland market, just uh, had a default. Um, the so, you know not a good sign there. Uh, defaulted on a hundred twenty-seven million dollar loan. Uh, I'm not seeing too much in terms of any spark to occupancy rates uh, or any sense that the return to office is giving a lift. And so until those things happen, you're still in an environment with the rising interest rates, which as commercial owners. They tend to refinance their debt every couple, three years. Um, they're getting caught short on this, and, and it's a rugged situation. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll continue to follow your coverage on therealdeal.com here in Southern California, as well as nationwide. Jerry Sullivan, National Managing Editor of The Real Deal, 
the authoritative uh, site on uh, commercial real estate. Thank you very much, uh, Jerry, for joining us live. I wish you and everyone there a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you too, Frank. Thank you. Thanks again. This is Motec on Money on 790 KBC. Stay tuned now for the 790 KBC News Blitz. It could be information to change your life forever. Or the Something You Should Know podcast could just be something interesting. Herb Cohen is one of the all-time legendary great sales trainers and negotiators. And he has some advice that will help you negotiate better. Make the other person feel superior and smarter than you. Care, but don't care too much. If you don't like the deal, walk away and see if the deal doesn't get better instantly. Something You Should Know, wherever you listen.